Columns and other compression members. Introduction. Structural members are subjected to axial compressive loads are often called by names identifying their functions. Of these, the best known are columns, the main vertical compression members in a building frame. Other common compression members include cords in trusses and bracing members in frames. And for Euler's column buckling theory, column buckling is a curious and unique subject. It is perhaps the only area of structural mechanics in which failure is not related to the strength of the material. A column buckling analysis consists of determining the maximum load a column can support before it collapses. But for long columns, the collapse has nothing to do with material yield. It is instead governed by the column's stiffness, both material and geometric. Euler buckling theory is the classical theory presented in textbooks and classrooms. It begins simply by noting that the internal bending moment in a loaded and deformed column is negative PY, where P is the compressive load and Y is the column deflection. So insert negative PY in for M. In the beam bending equation, EI double integration is equal to M. If the column is hinged at both ends, the Euler critical load is given as P critical is equal to pi squared times EI all over L squared. And the Euler critical stress is FE is equal to pi squared E all over L over R, which is the slenderness ratio squared. And for the effective length, real columns do not have pin connected ends. The restraints placed on a column's ends greatly affect its stability. To counter these effects, an effective length factor K is used to modify the unbraced length. The product KL is called the effective length of the column. This length approximates the length over which the column actually buckles and this may be shorter or longer than the actual unbraced length. Fe is equal to pi squared e all over kl over r squared where k is the effective length factor. And for the effective length factors, for buckled shape of a column shown by the dashed line, the theoretical k value rotation fix and translation fix another symbol rotation free and translation fix and this symbol rotation fix and translation free and this symbol is rotation free and translation free so the first diagram the rotation fix and translation fix both top and bottom support this is the shape of the buckle of the column and the theoretical k value is equals to 0.5 and the recommended design value k is 0.65. For the second diagram, we have the rotation free and translation fix and the bottom support, it is the rotation fix and translation fix. The theoretical k value is 0.7 and the recommended design value k is 0.8. The third diagram, this is a rotation fix and translation free and the bottom support is the rotation fix and translation fix and the theoretical k value is 1 and the recommended design value k is 1.2 the fourth diagram we have the rotation free and translation fix top and bottom support and the theoretical k value is 1 and the recommended design value k is also 1. The fifth diagram, we have the rotation free and translation free. And at the bottom of the support, it is rotation fix and translation fix. And the theoretical k value is equal to 2.0. Recommended design value is k is 2.1. And the last diagram, we have the rotation fix and translation free and at the bottom of the support that's rotation free and translation fix and the theoretical k value is 2 
and the recommended design value k is also 2. Slenderness ratio. It is defined as the ratio of the effective length to the corresponding radius of the gyration of the section. Slenderness ratio is equal to Le all over R, or it is KL over R, where L is the actual length of the column member, Le is equal to KL, which is the effective length, R is the appropriate radius of gyration. For the short steel column, the ratio or slender's ratio is less than 50. For the intermediate, that's 50 to 250. And for the long column, the slenderness ratio is more than 250 or above. And for the critical slenderness ratio, CCR, the, crit the critical slenderness ratio, CCR, corresponds to the upper limit of the elastic buckling failure which is defined by an average column stress equal to 0.5 Fy. And for the formula for the critical slenderness ratio, CC, it is equal to square root of 2 pi squared E all over Fy. And for the radius of gyration, gyradius of a body about an axis of rotation is defined as the radial distance to a point which would have a moment of inertia the same as the body's actual distribution of mass if the total mass of the body is work concentrated and k is equal to the square root of i sub y all over a and for the allowable compressive stress the allowable column stress varies with the slenderness ratio in elastic buckling occurs when slenderness ratio is less than or equal to critical slenderness ratio and the elastic buckling occurs when slenderness ratio is greater than cc allowable compressive stress for short columns failure by crushing and the compression blocks or pierce angle or f sub c which is the actual compressive stress is equal to p over a which is less than or equal to f sub c where a is equal to cross sectional area of the column p is load on the column and f c is equal to the allowable compressive stress pair codes for intermediate columns crash and buckle long columns failure by buckling and for the critical stress or compressive stress it is equal to pi squared e all over kl over r open close parenthesis square which is less than or equal to fcr where e is the modulus of elasticity of the column material k a stiffness or curvature mode factor l is the column length between pinned ends and r is the radius of gyration which is a square root of i over a and the difference between long column and short column for short column this will happen for a short column with a concentrated p there will be crushing failure while for long or slender column there will be buckling and for short column a short column is the one whose ratio of effective length to its least lateral dimension is less than or equal to 12 then it is termed as a short column effective i over b is less than or equal to 12 effective length over b is less than or equal to 12 and we can call it as short column for long or slender column a long or slender column is the one whose ratio of effective length to its least lateral dimension is not less than 12 then it is termed as a long column effective length over b is greater than 12 and we will consider that as long or slender column example a wide flange section for a five meter long column hinged at both ends has the following properties cross sectional area is equal to 8000 millimeter square radius of gyration r of x is equal to 100 millimeter radius of gyration r sub y it is 50 millimeter and modulus of elasticity or e is equals to 200,000 megapascal determine the Euler critical load of the column solution 
for the Euler critical load, P sub E is equals to F sub E times A. And for the Euler critical stress, F sub E is equal to the formula pi squared E all over KL over R squared, where K is equal to 1 because it is a hinge both ends. KL over R maximum is equal to 1 times 5000 over 50, where L is equal to 5 meters or 5000 millimeter, and R is the radius of duration which is equivalent to 50 and the value it is equal to 100 and for the Euler critical stress F sub E we have now the value for KL over R substitute the value which is 100 and F sub E or the Euler critical stress it is equal to pi squared times 200,000 which is E all over 100 squared and the Euler critical stress F sub E is equals to 197.4 megapascal. P which is equal to the critical or Euler critical load F sub E times A where A is the cross-sectional area which is given 8000 millimeters squared and F sub E is the Euler critical stress which is 197.4 megapascal. We multiplied 197.4 times 8000 which is the cross-sectional area and the value for PE that's 1,579,200 newton or P sub E is equals to 1,579.2 kilonewton so the value for Euler critical load and the value for Euler critical stress example a steel column has the following properties modulus of elasticity E is equals to 200 gigapascal yield strength which is F sub Y is equals to 200 megapascal length L which is 15 meter and moment of inertia that's I is equals to 37.7 times 10 to the power 6 millimeter exponent 4 and the area which is 8000 millimeter square determine the allowable compressive stress if the column is fixed at both ends solution the formula for critical slenderness ratio that's equal to square root of 2 pi squared e all over fy where e is equivalent to 200 gigapascal f sub y that's 200 megapascal or c sub c is equal to square root of 2 times pi squared times 200,000 for e all over 200 megapascal and the value for c sub c that's 140.5 and for k it is recommended value for fix both ends the given is it is fixed at both ends and the recommended value for k that's 0.65 r is equal to the square root of i over a which is the radius of gyration where i is equal to 37.7 times 10 to the power 6 millimeter exponent 4 and a is the cross-sectional area that's 8000 millimeter square so r is equal to the square root of 37.7 times 10 to the power 6 all over 8000 and the value for r or the radius of duration that's 68.65 millimeter for slenderness ratio kl over r where k is 0.65 fixed at both ends and l is the span which is 15 meters or 15,000 and the value for R or the radius of duration that's 68.65 so 0.65 times 15,000 and we divide by 68.65 the value for KL over R that's 142.02 since KL over R is greater than C sub C C sub C is 140.5 where KL over R is 142.02 therefore KL over R is greater than the value for C sub C and the formula we will use F sub A which is equals to 12 pi squared E all over 23 times KL over R squared and it is equivalent to 12 times pi squared multiplied by E which is 200,000 megapascal and we divide by 23 the constant and the value for KL over R which is 
142.02 and square and the value for f sub a it is equivalent to 51.06 megapascal and this is the allowable compressive stress Thank you.